Comrades and friends, uh, it is a great honour to be asked to speak at this Republican Socialist debate today as we proudly mark the 102nd anniversary of the Easter Rising in Dublin. When Republican Socialists, revolutionaries and many other ordinary Irish men and women took to the streets in order to drive British imperialism from our land. I'd like to thank the Art Court of the RSP for asking me to speak, as well as the families of the Republican Socialist martyrs, and to you, the core membership, for trusting me to do so. Easter is a time for reflection, comrades. It's also a time for celebration and a time for the renewal of our collective commitment to the Irish revolutionary idea. It is right that we reflect upon those who have fallen. Indeed, it is vital that we do so. The brave fighting men and women who are buried within this plot, within nearby plots, and indeed in graveyards across Ireland, these people gave their lives not only for an ideal of Irish freedom, fighting and dying in the process, and trying to make that dream a reality, but in a very real way, they also gave their lives for us personally as individuals. Our ability in 2018 to live relatively free from state brutality, relatively free from what was once a sure and persistent threat of assassination, and indeed our freedom to organise politically and with the determination to carry on the struggle for Irish freedom and socialism itself, can without a doubt be attributed to the fallen who we honour today. This point is of course particularly pertinent to the Irish Republican Socialist Party. Last year we made an extra effort to remember the Republican Socialist Martyrs of 1987. Those who died in defence of this great party and its right to exist. Very often, comrades, I have a tendency, some may call it a weakness, to spot symbolic coincidences at Easter and take political and personal strength from them. Usually I keep such notions to myself, but this year I'll share one with you all. Last year, comrades, as we stood here and honoured honored the martyrs of 87, the rain pelted down upon each and every one of us. It was relentless, and all who spoke from the platform fought their way through that storm to deliver their message, and everybody went home soaked. Easter 1987 was the same. The weather was fierce, literally fierce that day. But the speakers who took to the stand had fought their way through a much more vicious storm, as had all those who had the principle and tenacity to march with them. The RSP had long been declared an outlaw organisation by both the British state and their dependables in Leinster House. But by 1987 it was also outlawed from elements within our own community. People who tried their very hardest to murderously put the party of Pondo and Costco out of business. By 1987, by Easter 1987, the worst of that storm had passed, and the party spokespersons that Sunday were able to declare with confidence that the programme of the RSP would carry on without any further haste or hindrance, and indeed it did. Likewise, comrades, last year, 30 years almost to the day, our party left Milltown Cemetery having braved the storm albeit of much, a much less fierce nature, and having heard our spokespeople declare themselves once again the determination to carry on with the party programme. Indeed that year, indeed the year which has passed, comrades, the year in which we last gathered here, was one of great renewal, one of great vision and determination for the RSP. Collectively, within the past year, we have met, we have debated, collectively we have planned and constructed and collectively we analysed, we read, we wrote, and we published. As a party, we charted a path in the future struggle for Irish national liberation and socialism. And every party activist today, young and old, is sensing a time of great things for the RSP and for our ideals. It is one thing coming out of a storm and appreciating the heat and the warmth of later political progress. But we cannot, with any sense of integrity, forget those who did not survive. Indeed, those who failed sheltering this party and ensured its safe passage for the future. In every period since the conception of the RSP, the fallen martyrs did just that. In every period since the party's conception, attacks were mounted upon the organisers, the intellectuals, the guerrilla fighters, the spokespeople, and upon activists at a street level. So afraid was the British state of the pure revolutionary ideals of Conley and Coslo. The correct assertion that the struggle for Irish freedom and class struggle for socialism were in fact one and the same and must be, could be and would be pursued together. The day-to-day -to -day work of those who fell victim to the assassin's bullet 
Those who fell in the field of combat or within the fascist prison system built the foundations around which the RSP of 2018 can now set about implementing this most modern stage of our party programme. Sorry, comrade. No doubt the families of those fallen comrades are here also with us. And you too will remember your loved ones in your own mind, in your own way. We extend our condolences and our tributes to you also. Our dead, the fallen comrades of the Republic of Socialist Movement, allowed us to gather here today. They allowed us to plan for tomorrow. And we cannot, we will not forget their sacrifice when we push ahead our future programme of work. And so we again salute them today on Easter Sunday morning, paying tribute as we do, of course, to the Patriot Dead of all organisations and from all generations who lay within this cemetery. For Republicans and Republican Socialists, Easter should also be a time of celebration. The collective legacy of Irish resistance, its many centuries of bravery, audacity, and dogged determination in the face of waves of cruel adversity is on par with freedom struggles anywhere in the world. Many of you here have come through the trauma of combat. Many of you have come through the dark seasons of despair which are forced upon soldiers of freedom when they are committed to Britain's prison system. Many of you no doubt have felt the pain and guilt of losing comrades and the countless other negative emotions and negative impacts which inevitably come when the life spent in revolutionary struggle. Yet every day you get up and you renew yourself in the face of that adversity. You get up and you carry on your struggle without a wage and more often than not without a single complaint, all for the betterment of your class and your country. Show me a British imperialist who would dedicate the best part of his life for the greater good without a wage and without complaint. You will find very few. Show me a capitalist who will dedicate any part of his life without a wage or complaint, you will find none. Yet you, the Republican Socialists of Ireland, you represent the best that exists within this country. Your spirit which says that there is more worth in pursuing the collective good than in pursuing mere personal gain and ambition is the essence of the Irish Republican ideal. There are many on the Irish left who will claim to be the inheritors of Connolly. And you no doubt attempt to espouse the ideals of collectivism and equality. Yet only a few have gone further and translated those goals into action. Only a few have put their lives and liberty on the line, attempting to make Irish freedom and socialism a tangible and living thing, as opposed to a faded notion of some future washed out paid trade union officials. You, the fighting comrades of the RSP, rank amongst the faithful few. You have not merely interpreted the world, but as Marx commanded us, you went out to change it. Throughout the course of struggle, you also looked after each other. And you still do. But this is how Irish Republican Socialists behave. They care for each other now, just as the revolutionary state we seek to create will do so later. By their fruits you shall know them, said Jesus himself. When we see the collective spirit of solidarity here, that has emerged from the past struggles, the generosity of effort that our party comrades display daily, and their willingness to struggle and suffer for an ideal greater than themselves, then we can say without a shadow of doubt that today's RSP are indeed the true inheritors of James family. If that alone is not a cause for celebration, comrades, then I don't know what is. Of course, we honour and pay tribute to all the leaders of the Rising and all the volunteers who took part whether they were military, political, medical, or any who played any other role in that brave strike for freedom, we honour them all equally. Comrades, it would be remiss of us to speak of the selfless dedication for the Republican and Socialist cause and remembrance of the dead without mentioning the passing last year of our comrade Harry O'Hara, who, following his own long period of political struggle, took great personal pride and sought no reward whatsoever or recognition for the daily upkeep of this Republican Socialist plot and others who lay within this cemetery. Harry did a great job, and we do indeed recognise him for his work. Likewise, comrades, it would be remiss of us to speak of the need to stand by each other and to support each other without recalling the ongoing efforts of the little and families 
who this year have succeeded in dragging into the spotlight the reality of what was a Tory order campaign of murder against the leadership and intellectual backbone of this party in 1980. The families of Ronnie Pumpkin and Noel Little have always maintained that the death squad which visited so much sadness upon them were not the mere sectarian stooges of the UDA, but were indeed the well-trained, well-directed and well-triggered, well-paid trigger men of the Tory party itself. The decision taken by Tory Viceroy Karen Bradley a fortnight ago to snatch the power of inquest around the murders of Ronnie and Noel from the hands of an Irish-based Attorney General and handed to one of her own party colleagues at Whitehall smacks not only of a classic colonial disregard for the basic rights of the Irish people, but of a desperate attempt to cover up a campaign of political murder initiated by her own government and predecessors, which occurred well within living memory. We wish the Bumping and Little families well in their ongoing respective struggles, and we pledge our future support. Indeed, we pledge support for all such long-suffering families in their fight for truth and justice for their little ones. It, also, it is also vitally important that in the course of remembering our Patriot dead and our revolutionary dead at Easter, that we do not fall into the mistake of believing that their legacy of struggle can be confined to the past like some proud historical relic. We have a task to complete, comrades. It is a task which must be completed, yes, on behalf of our Patriot dead, but also on behalf of ourselves and the generations which will, which will come along after we have gone. Let nobody suggest that the vision which spurred on every fallen Irish revolutionary who lies within this cemetery and beyond is near completion. Unfortunately, that is simply not the case. In 1998, the IRSP declared its sincere belief that the logistical merit and practicing armed actions had passed and that we are entering a stage of political and street-based popular struggle. With the greatest respect to all sincere Republican activists today, it is increasingly clear that the RSP were correct in that analysis. Their analysis came with an important caveat, however, one which stressed that future political action on behalf of Republican Socialism could not and would not involve giving recognition to British policing structures in Ireland, holding sincerely that nothing was to be gained from such an action, and indeed only sorrow, grief and confusion could emerge from it. When we see how now, 20 years later, far from morphing into a normal police force, if indeed there is such a thing, the PSNA are in all and any meaningful ways advised, ordered, directed and led by the nose by British intelligence. We can confidently conclude that the legacy of the PSNA sits not within a handful of token Irish speakers at Garneval Training Centre, but with a litany of disgraceful cases of modern internment, a continuous wave of political-led raids and arrests on the homes of principal Republican activists and Republican socialist activists, an ever-visible presence of purple gloved thugs who stalk Republican families for search operations on their way to and from school, and the continued deliberate remanding into custody of Republican activists on the back of little or no evidence in an effort to distribute legitimate, to, dis, to disrupt legitimate political party activity, not of the link of the planners of Whitehall. Comrades, when I'm here, we really must address the events of Lurgan yesterday. Let me say quite clearly on behalf of the RSP. Every legitimate Republican organization in Ireland has the right to honor Ireland's patriot dead in whatever way they see fit. The posh boy spooks of MIT have no right whatsoever to send the PSNA in to disrupt an honorable commemoration. What occurred in Lurgan yesterday was a criminal assault upon a legitimate Republican commemoration. We condemn it and we stand by all those arrested and injured and we send them their very best, our very best. In 1988, this party also predicted that the Good Friday Agreement was not designed with the welfare of the Irish working class in mind and we urged opposition to it from the outset. Understanding that that document was driven with sectarian outlook. It was riddled with opportunities for the wealthy to transform Ireland 
not from the good of its people, but from the profits of international business. The RSP predicted that working class people would remain utterly economically oppressed in post Good Friday Ireland. Comrades, only last week our party activists were giving advice and counsel to working families threatened by the spectre of eviction caused by pay cuts and the false dynamics of a housing system made rotten by the presence of private landlords and opportunistic speculators. Every day we provide advice and assistance to marginalised and desperate families forced further into their economic despair under a system which does not give a toss for the material or emotional well-being of families. Few here need further reminding of the creeping spectre of poverty which looms over our working class communities, a spectre which will grow only bigger when fresh start mitigation packages begin to evaporate and it becomes apparent that there is no cavalry coming on the, over the horizon. How different this is to the financial dream that was promised us all by the state all those years back in 1998 when the Good Friday Agreement came to pass. Again in this area, the RSP was correct when we stated that a cross-community capitalist back agreement would be no substitute for a non-sectarian campaign of socialist resistance. Again, this party was correct. Last year, the party announced its belief that shifting demographics in the six counties and the subsequent growth of the progressive nationalist sentiment could see a potential for putting the only positive aspect of the Good Friday Agreement to the test and for the good of the national goal. It is our belief that if potential exists to demand in the near future a border poll or a referendum on Irish unity, then this is our opportunity to put the Good Friday Agreement to the test once and for all. Our people deserve something from the last 20 years of political stagnation. Our people deserve a chance to, for the first time in history, push for the independence of their nation in peace and without the fear of death or imprisonment. Give us a border poll and let us campaign positively for it. If nothing else, we will shake the political confidence of those who seek to petition Ireland indefinitely. Or if as is their way, if Britain refuses the wishes of the people, then we can safely drop the Good Friday Agreement into the dustbin of history. We have nothing to lose. Again, this call comes with an important caveat. Unlike all others who are lending their support to the notion of a border poll, we are not calling for the maintenance of the European Union structures in Ireland. Indeed, we are demanding an independent Ireland's withdrawal from the EU. We call, on the European, we call out the European Union for what it is, a rotten capitalist institution which, contrary to the claims of many, has not delivered workers' rights, it has not delivered human rights, and it has not delivered prosperity. Rather, it has taken the credit, on the one hand, for gains made internationally by the European workers' movement while attempting to destroy the same rights at every opportunity. We are not stupid. We are socialists. Socialism is impossible within the European Union. Indeed, a basic Republican economic programme which saw mere fairness and self-determination would be outlawed under the European Union. A basic checking of political facts would demonstrate this truth. We seek a socialist republic and solidarity with other workers' nations. These are the values which the EU was created to destroy. These are the traditional values of Sinn Féin and the founding and remaining values of the RSP. Our activists are mobilising countrywide to this end, comrades, and we are confident in the outcome. It goes without saying that we honour greatly and internally the efforts of sacrifice of all our patriot dead, but to truly honour them is to carry on with a programme of revolutionary change in Ireland. The RSP possess the correct programme, and we will not let down our revolutionary dead.